what we do while we're driving. Kill, what was I gonna say? We're trying to kill as many birds with stones as we can. We're driving around. We are probably still an hour and a half away from Monterey area or Santa Cruz. Santa we're going Cruz. to Santa Cruz yeah. for a, uh, to look at a boat, a mason boat. And we're trying to get accomplish a few things. So Hillary's got the laptop out as we do. Trying to set up some appointments for tomorrow for boats to look at in the Bay Area. We now have added a 47 foot steel custom cutter rig boat. The other people won't call us back. No one, yeah, we've called so many people and left so many messages. And here's, no one wants to sell a boat. Yeah, some of the brokers, not the best. Hopefully Santa Cruz, if we're in the right place, to look at another Mason, another Mason 43 park in front of the restaurant. Cute little beach town here, Santa Cruz. Nice little marina. Um, yeah. We <laughs> went from, it was 106 earlier today. Oh, it's where we were driving through. It's it's about 60 yeah, one. it's so cold here. Well, not cold, 60. but it's nice. It's like Crisp. normal, normal temperatures. If you didn't catch last week's episode, we found out about this boat, which wasn't actually listed yet, from a helpful broker in Marina del Rey. We were really excited about it, but found some big issues right away on deck, including rigging and a strange deck job. Had the epoxy over the teeth, yeah, right? that's the that's See the, 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 the crack whole. Line. So the Mason Forty Three. Beautiful, beautiful layout. Really, so, yeah. we love that design of boat. We had never heard of it before and it is nearly perfect, the interior layout. Uh, from what we've seen, there's always you want to always take bits of different sailboats and put them together. This is probably the best designed layout of any boat we've ever seen. Everything is practical, everything's accessible, everything's usable, yeah. and it's beautiful. Great access to all the tanks, really nice berths, a great double berth in the back, and then there's also kind of like a separate, but kind of in the same cabin, single berth. Really cool V-berth, separate cabin up forward. One really nice head, really nice shower. Love the galley, the, the heater. But, unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna work out. 98% that it's not gonna be a good fit. Yeah. Uh, not based on, probably thinking the price will be out of our range for the work that needs to be done. Some major work on there. Mast step needs to be replaced, it's sunk. It's totally sunk in. The rigging is no good at all. Shot. Totally shot. And decks. the decks are a big issue. Instead of removing the teak, they epoxied and painted over it. And now you can see cracks showing through. Now it's just going to be harder work to remove the teak decks. Not, so, not, a, not a definite no, but I don't think for the price that we think it'll take to get it up to par, they're probably not going to come down to need, it. Yeah, it needs a lot of work. Definitely a really nice boat. We'd love to keep our eye out for another Mason because we like that, um, but not this one. All right, next morning. We're in Alameda, which is like East San Francisco Bay. We'll look at a Tartan 42. Been sitting a little while, huh? Yep. Let's take one half this. Uh, are you going to be around at all, or there's no one there at all to, to help show? We have had a tough time getting in touch with brokers here in San Francisco got off the phone, have something set up. The broker won't be there, but we can go look at the boat ourselves, which isn't bad since we haven't had the best experience with brokers. The broker here in, where are we right now? Alameda. Alameda. Was more interested in signing us up, I think, to have him be a buyer's agent for us. And there was a whole bunch of reasons he wanted to give us on the legalities of why we needed to have yeah. a buyer's agent. Apparently, kind of something like that. It was BS. I think he was, yeah. I don't know. He was Every woman us. just wants a, a cut of the money. Yeah. But basically this tartan we just looked at is a no-go. 
Um, price is way too high for the conditions in. A lot of original hoses, original wiring. Um, what else? Yeah, it's a nice day here. It is a nice day. It turned out to be nice and sunny now. Yeah. We are in Emeryville and we are here to look at a steel boat. We didn't have it on our list, but kind of excited about it, yeah? Australian designer. Mm-hmm. It and sounds like a really nice boat. We'll see if it lives up to what it sounds like. Basically original boat and no hard shines. Curious. Yeah. Didn't sound like there was a pressurized water system. No. All, all. No, this is it. Okay. And that's that's fresh water pumped there, right? Right. Uh, propane tank is right there. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, I, I was looking past where you're pointing. Watch your head. Watch your head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watch your head. Yeah. Crawl in there. Oh, this is the this is the pirate hideout. Yeah. Or oh, the, the drug smuggling, depending on what business you're in. <laughs> this was an interesting one, with the potential of being a great cruising boat, but it was very bare bones and basic, and would certainly need some additions to make it a practical cruising liveaboard. Standing on a 47 foot steel cutter rig boat, very basic below, and we love that. Super basic, but yeah, it's good. It's less stuff to break. There's no can add water pump, want. no fresh water pump, so no it's all manual pumps. Water, yep. Uh, gee, what else is... There's no shower. No shower. Um, Gives us the ability to maybe do a bit of additions where we like it, as opposed to the boats where you've got two heads and 15 pumps and hoses everywhere. stuff that we don't need or want necessarily. Less complication is where we're at. I suggest you do it too. Yeah. Makes things easier. For sure. But this is an interesting boat. We don't know much about steel. Uh, it, it is something we've wanted and thought about and would be an awesome boat to go cruising in. Especially high latitudes down south, southern Chile. We just don't know. All right, we're in Sausalito. Crazy traffic to get in here. This is a popular Tons weekend. of people. I'm gonna go take a look at a Bob Perry 41. Right here. And it's right here. I think that's it. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. But I did not know it had that many teak decks, did you? Did we know this? Yeah. We did? So. I think I need you to walk around on it. It's an interesting right companion way. I don't think that's... is that glass? <laughs> I think we're on the wrong boat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a sailboat. It is. It's a nice looking boat. But apparently not the one we were coming to look at. Okay. We weren't on the wrong boat, but it's locked up. And the guy said he was going to leave it unlocked. Break yeah. the uh, stained glass. Mm, moldy, musty, but pretty. Not much bigger. It's a little bigger than Varuna. Nice boat. Look, like we like all the Bob Perry boats. This one's probably down the scale a bit. It's everything is original on this. There are some real old school uh, electronics for sure, and even the systems. The front loading refrigerators they put on these old things is just a terrible idea even though it looks gorgeous with so much nice woodwork. There's not that much great space on this boat. You've got a little bit of a tight kind of cabin, uh, closed off quarter berth, a V berth, not much bigger than Varuna. Let's see, structurally there's definite flaking and rust around them on the plate under the mast step. The deck is quite springy. Uh, and there's already some supports that you can see down in the anchor locker. There's a metal I-beam and a piece of like one inch wood that's been placed in for supports. Um, it's just not a boat that's ready to go offshore. After looking at boats in the Bay Area, we headed over to Reno, where we had family to stay with while we waited to hear back about last week's offer on the Vauquier 
and to think over the boats we had seen so far. In the end, it turned out that the Vauquier seller was not as flexible on price as the broker had thought, but we were interested in that steel boat and decided to make an offer. Are you filming my hash brown? Yeah. Yep. Well, we are back in the car, driving again, back to San Francisco. We're gonna take a second look at that steel boat. We put in an offer, got a pretty reasonable counter offer, so we're gonna go back, take a look, see if we want to counter again, or if we want to stick to our price. Three hour drive, we're gonna climb the rigging, probably go in the water maybe, if it's not gross. <laughs> Hey, we're here. Rubicon Yachts here in Emeryville. I'm gonna go check out that custom steel cutter again. Climb the mast, look at it out, check it a bit. I'm gonna go up and have a little look at the rigging on this boat here. I'm trying to decide if we're gonna put this, are we gonna counter or not? What do you think? Where are you at? I don't know, it's tough. This boat does have internally run halyards which we've discovered makes it a little bit more complicated for using our climbing gear to go up the mast. There's not really many spare lines that you can get to if you're underway and using the mainsail. You only have the spinnaker. If it's the spinnaker halyard that you lost or something then you don't really have anything to climb up. Same problem again. Yeah, it's, you, it's not, you can't get it tight. There's legs. The boat has legs. What? I think they're dead. Oh no, they're alive. They're alive. It's like the, somebody just dropped their house on me. Well, this is the 47 foot custom, custom steel cutter. We've checked the rigging, we've debated checking the bottom in the water here, but there's no visibility right now. Right uh, now we've found this, what, what, what have we found that's still things we're thinking about? There's no chart table, uh, which isn't a problem. What they're using is the top of the refrigerator for kind of their chart table. But we would really like a nice station for a computer to sit and work and edit videos. Kind of just the main dining table is I think where that's going to be now. It's not ideal. Not so ideal. something we're going to toss up. What there's no else? shower. No shower. Which isn't a hard thing to put in. Um, just have to figure out, pull out the floor, put in a sump pump. There's no pressurized water, so we'd have to put that in. A lot of these port lights don't necessarily open. They weren't quite thought out all the way when they designed well, none them. None of them open. None of them open without taking the wing nut completely off. Some of them, you can't take the wing nut off or it doesn't swing all the way up. There's a couple of weird things in terms of the plumbing. The head doesn't have a the head overboard's been closed off, so it goes to a holding tank. So to discharge the head holding tank, it is connected to the bilge pump system, the manual bilge pump system, which you need to turn a couple of valves, and you pump it out, and it pumps out into the cockpit floor here. Into um, this. We're not sure if it just goes into the floor or directly into the scuppers. We're not sure. It's pretty kind sure of a it goes into the scuppers. It, it, it has to, but we're told there's quite a smell, which would happen either way. The cockpit floor is one solid piece, so we can't actually get that up to, to get in to look at the scuppers. That being said, we know there's a couple of winches that need maintenance, rigging that needs cleaning. There's no solar on board, which we'd need to fit, and mm -hmm. the added cost to go with that. Batteries are, are due for replacement. We'd need to do something with that as well. Uh, what, what are the there's other ones? There's a few little rust spots on the deck that mm -hmm. need to be taken care of. That's just, with the steel boat, that's going to be a constant ongoing thing that you're always doing. Uh, but there's definitely some spots that we should look at. Refrigeration. No refrigeration on board, but what is built in is a nice old school icebox. We've got some decisions to make, see if we want to go further with this. We do have a counter offer in. We need to decide if that's still worth it because there is some things on here. For us, because of where we want to take it, we don't want to take it coastal cruising. We kind of want to get this boat and get south pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that it's got what we need in that department. Yes. And we are missing a wind vane. We are missing the solar. We need to see if we're overthinking stuff, I guess. As at what point do you stop looking and say that's, that's a pretty good boat and not analyze every little thing? Because you're never going to find the perfect boat. 
what where's your value for money and what you want to do in it and that's that's a hard one that's definitely up to each individual and that's something we need to think about on what we really think we'll need to spend on the boat in the future because it's a lot of money it's definitely on the high end of our budget for what we were trying to do with this today is going to be a pretty big day for us one of the biggest days in quite a while yeah. We're here in a really exciting Motel 6, which is pretty crappy, but pretty best bad. we could find at 130 bucks in San Francisco area. But we need to be in the Bay Area because today's a big day. Big day, we get to meet the owner and go on a test sail and pick his brain all about the boat. So hopefully after today, we will know 100% whether or not we're gonna take the boat. And then after today, we start our drive back to Mexico. That's gonna be a very it's long drive. Be a long drive. Go we'll pick all of our stuff up from Veruna. Want your long sleeve shirt out? Okay. Good. Good. Oh. All right. We are back in Emeryville. Now the owner's gonna be here. We're gonna go out on the test sale with the owner, which will be great. We can ask him lots of questions got a big list of stuff going on what we want to ask about systems and all that jazz on how it works yep and yeah hopefully it'll be all good and we'll be close to having a boat after this now we just got to learn how to weld yeah <laughs> thank you so much for watching and a huge thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible make sure to click the bell so you don't miss next week's episode to find out how the test sale went as some surprising turns unfold in our boat search see what's inside the floor if there's some storage in here. Die! Ah! Hello. Hello. Is that gooey? This is, this is the pirate hideout. Pirate hideout. That's or drug smuggling. Smuggle we need, things. We need extra money.